Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who's wondering if she should accept a free trip to Paris from somebody she doesn't really know. <laughs> like, oh, I love our specific. listeners so much. I love That's our very listeners specific. so much. Um, uh, yeah. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. No, we are not. And we're not travel agents either. No. <laughs> so we can't we can't really give you any specific travel advice. Um, but yeah, this is all to remind you that we don't know what we're talking about. We're not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right. We are going to start with a check-in topic because it is Monday. Uh, and this check-in topic is inspired by a letter writer, uh, Parker A., who's pronounced our he, him, who's writing from the gender-neutral bathroom at the climbing gym. Uh, and basically, Parker talks about his experience of meeting a friend uh, who is named Claire, who's a lesbian at uh, the climbing gym that they both go to. And uh, Parker is a trans man. Um and has been for a while, um, started using tea while, uh, sort of right before he met Claire, um, and hasn't really come out to Claire. So Claire is still using she, her pronouns to describe Parker. Um, and Parker's like, it's kind of like a gut punch every time, but I also don't know how to change the dynamic. Right. Yeah. It's been uh, like nine months. Yeah, absolutely. Cause like, it's like, well, I should have told her like nine months ago, as opposed to like now nine months into our friendship. Uh, it's and Parker says it's now it's like that. Parker says now it feels like when you don't know someone's name, but you've known them for long enough that it would be awkward to ask, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, how do I be like, uh, excuse yeah. me? Yeah. Um, and so we thought and we he, would sort of answer this letter quickly and be like, you can just tell her, and <laughs> also talk about kind of the dynamic of of what it looks like to change a dynamic a in dynamic. a relationship that's yeah. been like mm -hmm. established. Like how do you, how do yeah. you disrupt kind of like what feels really comfortable for the other person? And you have to like, mm -hmm. yeah. And you have to be like, Ooh, nope, sorry. We need to do something different. Uh, kind of like coming out, you know, in like the, it's literal sense of like, you know, coming out as trans or coming out as queer or whatever, but also like coming out into like a different iteration of this relationship mm -hmm. with yeah. some sort of information that might change the dynamic. Yes. I think you described that perfectly. And I love that you use the word like um, disrupting like a potential comfort. I think you said that the, that the one friend or person has, um, because I think this comes down to, it's like a, a subtle subconscious caretaking that we do. At least that's how I feel like, like I know there's people out here who have never felt this and that's okay. And I love, <laughs> and I love that about them. <laughs> I, love I love that about too. them. That's but great. there are people out there who, uh, like me who like if somebody, <laughs> this is the wrong thing. But if somebody has been like, for example, like let's pretend somebody calls me the wrong name for like three months, I would be like, well, I don't want to make them uncomfortable by telling them that they've been calling me the wrong name for three months. Do you know That's what I really mean? Real. Absolutely. Um, and they are, and that is just like the more psychotic ex made up example. There is, there are even wilder things from reality. Like how do I tell them that I don't actually like drinking as much as they do that we do together and I don't want to drink with them as much or Ooh, yeah, how do one. I, yeah. Or how do I tell them that I, um, you know, they, they see me in one way, but I want to do something else. They see me as, um, I don't know, the, the, laid back, cool friend, but I'm always anxious. I, I don't know. These are bad, <laughs> <laughs> these are yeah, bad examples, are but examples. to Parker and to anybody who resonates to this, this, I just want to say, I really relate to this sort of like, oh no, how is my wholeness? How is my personhood um, potentially becoming something disruptive to somebody else and feeling the need to tamp it down. Um, I just think that's really normal, whether or not it's like self-destructive or unhelpful. I really relate to it. Um, but as Sam said, um, I think Sam, Sam, you said like 300 episodes ago, maybe in our first couple of years, you were using the phrase like awkward isn't real. Will you talk <laughs> yeah. about it in this? Will you talk about it in this context, particularly? Yeah. Uh, 
this was a helpful thing that I learned from my friend Jake. So Jake, if you're listening, thanks for this, um, stealing it, uh, which is just this idea that awkward isn't real. Like, I feel like I spent so much of my life, um, being concerned about making things awkward for myself or other people. And I just had to, uh, I was telling this to Jake and Jake was like, well, awkward's not real, right? Like it's not like a, it's not like a concrete definable thing. Like we all just decide that things are awkward. And I was like, that's really true. So I've just, I embrace this idea that like, I'm just going to decide that this isn't awkward to tell you and that it's actually just like really normal and understandable that I am going to do this thing because I lived my life in so much fear of being awkward all the time. And, and it was really, really helpful. So I think that I love that idea for this particular instance, because like, yeah, it might make things a little uncomfortable, but it's not going to like make things, you're not being awkward. (laughs) You're just like telling somebody an important thing about you. (laughs) Like you're just, you are trying to live in the fullness of your identity or the things that you need. And, and that's never awkward, right? It might be awkward for the other person, but like, that's not your problem, right? So how are you holding it for yourself and saying like, this isn't awkward for me, so I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I want to say like, I think something I have had to tell myself literally in the last couple mo- weeks of my life is that it is okay for your needs to spill onto other people or your preferences or or your personhood, right? Like, and when I spill, say spill onto somebody else, I just mean like, I have been really anxious about this, a car ride that I'm taking literally the week before this episode comes out. Um, and I want to take the car ride in a very specific way. Y'all who are on the Patreon know what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for your fucking awesome advice. I love you all so much. Um, and I want to take this long car ride in a very specific way. And I, my whole anxious spiral was about telling people that I had these, these needs, you know, and you know, it's, so I'm telling myself Sam's totally right. Awkward is only real when we make it real, right? You can just, you can literally put on a fake mask and pretend that this is an awkward, you know, or you can, or you can liberate yourself from the idea of awkwardness. Um, because like life is, is just that (laughs) life is miscommunication over and over again and fixing that. But you can also find some peace in the idea that like, it's okay if Claire feels, um, that Claire, if Claire has an adjustment to this new understanding of you, this uh, self-consciousness about this new understanding of you um, and your personhood, your wholeness is worth that. You know, your, your desires are worth that at times. Right. Um, That's what I've had to tell myself. Um, I also want to just like nod at the fact that I'm assuming that Claire is an awesome person who is totally awesome and open and accepting and doesn't have a bigoted bone in their body. I'm just going to move through life assuming that. And also I know that's not the reality. So please know we're moving forward with this conversation as though Claire is the awesome, you know, holistic friend who sees you as a whole person um, that we know that you are. Yeah, absolutely. And I also think that like, you know, folks who are trans, you know, women, folks of color have been really taught to hide their identities and like hide what they need from other people as well. So I think I can totally understand why you trying to take up space feels like you are like taking away from other people, right? Because we've, we've asked people with these marginalized, marginalized identities to like keep themselves as small as possible. And that like those identities, the requests that they have that are tied to those identities are like really inconvenient for people who are part of the dominant culture. Right. And so like, I think a lot of us like just, just like eat it. Right. We're just like, "Mm, Nope, that's okay. Uh, I've, you know, we've been really well trained to not try and ask other people to accommodate us in our identities or in our experiences. And like part of that, I think is part of, I think our, our willingness to eat it is because of safety, right? Because we don't know if we can trust the people around us to see our full selves and accept them or even like hold them without violence towards us. Right. And also sometimes we have to figure out like that people are, that there are people in our lives who are trustworthy with 
our identities with our experiences in those identities. And it sounds like Claire is, right? I know that I've found people in my life who are very accepting and open to it. And there are also places where I don't talk about being queer, don't talk about being non-binary because I don't trust other people to be able to hold it effectively, you know? And it, and I think it can be really hard sometimes to discern between who's trustworthy and who's not trustworthy, especially if we've had lots of bad experiences with people who aren't trustworthy. And so I, I want to just like name that too. And, and, and to like kind of relieve some of the pressure of like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I not? Why is it so hard for me to like be out and talk to this person about this thing? Yeah, absolutely. We've had tons of experiences where it's gone really poorly, right? And yeah. mm-hmm. the messages that we're getting from lots of different places are that our experiences aren't real or that our identities aren't valid or that, you know, we, the way that we express ourselves is a stereotype. And that's really on like, you know, there's just so many ways that we get told that we're doing it wrong and right. that we don't actually matter. Uh, right. So I want to just like name that for you, Parker, and say like, yeah, it, it's understandable that you're so scared of what is going to change in the dynamic between this relationship or between you and this person that you really like, because, you know, there's evidence to say that like, that's been people's experiences and that doesn't mean that it's every experience. Right. And I know that that discernment of like, who's trustworthy and who's not can be really hard for folks who have experienced prejudice and violence and all sorts of things. And there are people who are trustworthy, right? Like it's like both of these things at the same time. Uh, and it sounds like for you, Parker, Claire is a person who who seems pretty trustworthy. And also thank you for trusting us with telling us this experience too. Like we, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'll just end by saying um, whether or not people receive it, you are worth being known wholly and fully. Um, and oftentimes our, Our needs are worth being seen and held by others as well as ourselves. So hopefully this helps. Um, Parker and anybody listening, good to get into our letter. Let's do it. All right. Today's letter is from Anonymous Traveler, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing to us from Minneapolis. Hi, Sierra and Sam. I'm in a unique situation and in dire need of some advice ASAP. (laughs) My senior year of college, I started dating a guy. Let's call him Jack. We recently broke up after a year long distance relationship. Throughout college, I was really social and had a lot of friends. And there was one guy in particular who was always around. Let's call him Charlie. Charlie casually showed interest in me all throughout college, but due to my relationship and not being fully interested in him, I never pursued him back. Fast forward to now, Charlie has re-entered my life in the past few weeks and my interest in him has only increased. We have hung out a few times. Nothing physical has happened between us because Jack and I had just broken up and I wanted to be single for a while. Basically, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about Charlie. Here comes my big question. His job requires him to travel a lot, and he just asked me to go with him on an eight-day trip to London and Paris and pay for everything. Everything is in all caps, so it's like everything, everything. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Like some Christian gray shit, she writes. (laughs) I have never been to Europe, and it's always been a dream of mine. I haven't given him an answer yet because I'm worried about what expectations will come with it. Will this mean he expects this to turn into a relationship? Will he expect sex? Is there a world where it is possible for me to go on a trip like this and not owe him anything? How can I get these questions answered? And even if he says there are no expectations, how will I know if he's being genuine? I feel safe around him, but I'm a little overwhelmed thinking about the what ifs. Please help me navigate this decision. It could be the most fun, most spontaneous adventure, but it could also turn into a flaming pile of dog shit. Thanks for any advice. I love your podcast so much and I appreciate all the thoughts you have. Love Anonymous Traveler. All right, Anonymous Traveler, thank you so much for writing. Um, I'm so sorry that this band invited you on an all expenses paid (laughs) trip to Paris and London. That must be be so difficult for you. No, no, no. (laughs) We're going to take a break and Sam's going to put his empathy hat back on. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I know that this is like a very emotionally fraught thing and there are lots of different things to consider. I am truly torn and I'm going to tell y'all why. No, absolutely. I, I, in my head, I'm like, yeah, go for it. But I'm also like, yeah, you raised some really good 
things to mm-hmm. think about in terms of what this is going to look like and how it's going to go. So uh, I do understand that this is much more complicated than just like saying yes or no to a free trip. Uh, and we're going to get into some of those complications and offer some advice about how you might want to move forward <laughs> with this decision after the break. <laughs> I've never scolded you harder. (laughs) (laughs) All right, pals, welcome back. And to our letter writer, thank you so much for writing and trusting us with this question. Honestly, I hope you hear the response in time to have it influence your decision, but I do trust you to make the right decision according to your intuition, Um, which is, let me first say, probably why this is a trickier question than, than normal, because it's like... (laughs) <laughs> at the thought of having a free trip, all expense paid trip to Europe, um, my intuition would be like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> he doesn't look like an ax murderer. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> get in that like, car yeah. with that stranger. You know, He's perfect. 100%. <laughs> yeah. As I've gotten older, I have learned to um, assess opportunities like this with a little bit more of a grounded headspace. And I think that's where I'm approaching it now. Like, um, Truthfully, I do think this could be a great experience. The I think the first thing I'm concerned about is how good of a friend you consider yourself to be, um, because this is so fast. It's ha- the the offer came so fast, and that's the biggest red flag for me. Is that I, if I just started dating somebody, well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm Sierra. No, 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 don't I'm, pretend. I, I know. I know. Me too. <laughs> You'd be like, wait a minute. Like, eight <laughs> uninterrupted days with a person. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Very true. Very true. But eight days is just a little too long for me to be with somebody new. Um, and uh, traveling is stressful. Um, navigating. Um, how about this? I do. I see a lot of landmines. I, let me let me finish the point I was going to say is that I did go on like a road trip with a boyfriend like a couple weeks, like three weeks after meeting him and like brought him to meet my parents. We ended up dating for like five years. Um, so that was like the right intuition. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm <laughs> I'm I definitely could see this going well, but there's a lot of like things that come up for me. I think also as a as a woman, you know, the conditioning that we get around like sex being something that's owed, you know, um, and how about this? This could go good. This, this could go really, really well. That's why I'm curious about your friend dynamic. Like how cool is it to hang out? Like how chill are you? How easy it is it to talk with him? Is it easy to be in silence with him? You know, um, because traveling is that it's stressful. It's logistics it's like okay so if is he working during the day and you can do whatever you want does he expect you to um not like sightsee without him there's just so many logistics um on top of the weird pressure that whether or not we believe it but this idea of like this being a huge favor do i owe him something which is whether, however flawed that is, very understandable. And obviously, you know, the only person who can answer these questions is your friend, Charlie. And you're right. Like Charlie also might not in a nefarious way, but Charlie might have, sounds like Charlie really likes you (laughs) and would really love for you to maybe be more than friends on this trip. I don't know Charlie's character. So like, is he somebody who gets weird after drinking or, you know, or, like, I don't even mean that in like a, uh, like a violence oriented way. I mean that like, is he going to like pout and be cranky or cruel or I don't know. I would never, man, a free trip to Europe is hard for me to say no to. <laughs> and I'm old enough to know that that trip could be really shitty. And that could, that could ruin my association to trips like that or Europe or whatever. Um, I don't know. I've made enough bad spontaneous decisions to be a little wary and also i'm broke so i (laughs) (laughs) i've spent the majority of my life like being super poor so yeah absolutely um i mean i'm leaning on the side of like just go for it sounds romantic which is like so funny because we (laughs) like uh, we've really flipped the script on this one yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) absolutely i'm like eh 
do it. What could go wrong? Lots of things could go wrong. That's absolutely true. Um, but I think, you know, I think you should talk to Charlie about these concerns that you have, right? And and how he responds to those concerns are going to be a barometer for whether or not you want to go on this trip with him, right? And I think you should say explicitly stuff like, hey, like I you know, I really want to go on this, but I also want to make sure that there's like no expectations that like we're, this is like a romantic trip where I'm supposed to like have sex with you because we're on it. Right. Or like, Hey, if you're paying for all of this, I want to make sure that like, you know, there's no expectations that I'm somehow supposed to pay this back for you. Or like, Hey, if we're on this trip and something goes wrong where we like have a fight or like something doesn't happen, like what's the plan, right? Like, how are we going to think about this? And, and I think if he, if he's in a place where he's, I would ask these types of questions because I think his responses would tell me about whether or not it feels like good to go with him. Because if he's like, oh, we won't fight or like, that's not going to happen or like dismissive of those concerns, I'd be like, okay, well, this is not a person I want to travel with. But if he were like, yeah, I mean, if we have a fight, here's how I think we would handle it. Right. Then I'd be like, okay, cool. So like, he's thinking about this stuff too. It's not just like, he's expecting this to go perfectly and that it's going to be beautiful and romantic without any like real world stuff happening. Like that's, that would be for me how I would gauge whether or not I would want to go on a trip with this person. Right. Like how, how is he also thinking about the logistics or realities of what could happen here? The other thing that I'd say is like, if you go on this trip, plan outs for yourself, right? Like, and I mean this like plan, like, when you're in London, like look up the nearest hostel <laughs> close to you and be like, if something happens, I will go to this place, right? Have enough money in your bank account that you can get like taxis, you have enough for food, like to, that you can buy your own airfare back to home, right? Like th think about if shit happens, if the shit hits the fan and we decide like this isn't working and he turns into a total asshole, Right. Like where are what are the things that I'm going to do to remove myself from that situation? So I don't feel trapped in like a hotel room with a person who is like unsafe or, or like being weird. Right. Like that's those are the sort of like the reality checks that I would place on my romantic vision of what this trip is going to look like. And like, I, I don't know, like I have faith, you know, you like know this person. It's not like he's like a total stranger to you. Like he's a person that's come back into your life and that you had positive feelings about before and have positive feelings about now. Right. Like a lot of this is saying to me, like this could go really well. This could be a really fun and exciting story to tell people about how you met and went on this world world one trip together. Right. And let's make sure that we're living in reality, which is to say like, we need to ask some important questions and we need to have some plans to figure out like, what do we do if things go wrong? And that doesn't mean that it can't also be romantic and whirlwind, but it having some of that re realistic grounding is also, I think really reasonable. And you should I probably, think I think you should be thinking about that. Absolutely. Don't just like go with this man with like no plans. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Know <laughs> like, me, no like, questions I asked. Am, <laughs> I am all about like the romance. I'm all about the spontaneity. I I'm all about free travel. Listen, it is yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I just, you know, I've also learned in my meager 38 years at this point, um, that sometimes you got to say no to the shiny thing. Um, however, I the, uh, literally the likelihood of, that I would go on this trip is like 50, 50. So it could go either <laughs> could way. Either you just way. have to like, you got to assess it, you know? And if it doesn't feel right, then I don't think you should go. And if it feels right, then have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. I know that I'm telling you to go on this trip, but would I go on this trip? Absolutely not. Spending nine days with someone I like, I'm not dating. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I would rather die. I wish it was like <laughs> five. And then I would, then I'd be like, just go <laughs> for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, all right, my darling. Uh, all this to say, hope... this is, <laughs> we've offered you no practical advice. <laughs> no, we gave uh, definitely practical advice. Um, we hope you, this helps. We hope you make a decision that feels good for you. And we hope this trip or not trip is awesome. Absolutely. You could also say not this one, but the next time you go, hey, I'm on board. Hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that. Okay. All right. We obviously love you and we hope that this advice helps. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us or if you would like access to our monthly office hours, this is when we hop on Zoom 
and hang out with anyone who wants to join us where we shoot the shit and also answer people's questions in real time. Uh, you can get access to that with just $5 a month on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash just break up pod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship meme, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcast and his music. And remember, sometimes you have to say no to what seems like a good thing because you're grown and you know what that good thing might cost or you you know want to protect your peace more but other times you got to say yes to a little bit of unknown and adventure there's no right answer and if all else fails just break up <laughs> <laughs>